which is not uncommon, it's 40%. I've tried to summarize the whole intervention in just one video, which is the one on the right side. This is, you can see the runoff. You can check to try see where it's the runoff, which is the lower set, zone 3, S3. You can puncture zone 3, S3. I did give a little bit of local anesthesia. And then after that, I went to, with retrograde to the SFA. And you can see uh, this is a distal runoff to make sure, because at the end of the procedure, you want to know that you haven't embolized. This is, I'm injecting xylocaine around the SFA to ease up the pain, or just the danger needle. Around the SFA, you can see the calcification in the SFA. And after that, uh, I went to with the needle, uh, retrograde, and the wire. You can see. The needle um, went through the artery by the calcification, and then you pass the wire retrograde, and you try to make run the uh, Usually, you go with a catheter, uh, five or six French catheter, best to have a decurved catheter, and you try to direct the curved catheter towards the wall. Uh, this was a perforation that happened when I went anti-grade. So, perforation is not a contraindication to complete the procedure. You can see this is a retrograde wire. Uh, going uh, from the uh, from the anterior tibial artery, going upward, and uh, here you see wire. You try to see navigate your wire, and you must have uh, double imaging. You have, must have an AP and lateral view, and you do multiple balloon dilatation. Also, you haven't done the rendezvous yet, but you do multiple balloon dilatation because you are in the retrograde average. You are not widening the dissection. And after that, you hit uh, the, the, this is anti-grade, retrograde flossing. And then you do the rendezvous, you can see the trick about the rendezvous is that you make the angled caster look at the wall. And then you make the wire to hit the wall. And then it will redirect again into the caster. And this will happen, and then after that, straightforward balloon dilatation, and the perforation has a stop. And uh, I use, I think in this case, uh, uh, one of the superior stent. And this is the imaging after finishing procedure. So this is basically a collection of the, the, the safari techniques that I have used. Um, now there is the uh, copidone strike technique, which is extremely appealing technique. And this is a technique which has converted the arterial venous fistula to be done uh, endovascular with on-shelf on uh, tools. So what is basically is you go with a wire, and um, with wire uh, from down below, which have a hook and the loop, and you go from above, and you try to pass the cylinder uh, needle into these uh, uh, two uh, wires. So this is the copito technique, and uh, I will, you, you put the snare down, the snare up, so you have two rings, one in the vein, one in the artery. So what's left is you pass the cylinder needle hitting two rings, and then you push the one below, so this is the wire in the vein, and the one above, wire in the artery. And here you have your techniques. This is very appealing. Uh, no one knows which one has started for the arterial venous fistula. Um, I'm putting the next, yep. So this is the community techniques, not my video. This is a video from the Intervention Society of Radiology. And uh, it will work, yes. You can see one is there, pull the wire, uh, above the one snare, put it below, and this is how it's being done. So, uh, this is the uh, summary of the safari technique, which I have used quite a lot, which has actually dropped my failure in SFP intervention um, really quite around 20% after using safari technique. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for this very nice illustrative uh, uh, presentation. Uh, you have another presentation? Yes. yes. Can you start, please? So we'll go to the other presentation about the distal protection devices. Yes, the one we missed. The, the one we missed, yes. I, I can see now the slides goes in order. Critical protection device on Dr. Perot, consultant vascular surgeon and examiner of college of surgeon. No conflict of interest regarding this procedure. To topic I'm going to touch the definition of this EBDs and worldwide uh, market of EBDs. I will just have a clip about carotid EBDs and to answer the question what is the best EBD? So, the definition 
uh, body protection devices are devices that prevent the destabilization. This is a basic mutation. You can find them in carotid territory, in rena, in central, uh, when you are doing the TVAR, in peripheral protection, the lower limb, and in coronaries. So I will try to cover everything not related to coronaries. These are the uh, five types of EPDs. If you go to the worldwide market, they're actually around 2 billion. Uh, in 2022. So the market is huge for embolic protection devices and it is, they are definitely here to stay. Um, the embolic protection devices happen in 100% of cases. This is a paper I like because whatever you do, if you detect the emboli with TCD or multiple uh, tools, they happen in every intervention. Um, does protection matter? Yes, because it can make a big difference. Life to this situation, if you don't come out of the stenting, you didn't do protection, the patient will die from a stroke. So it means definitely they are matter. Um, and what is the evidence? Well, the evidence has been shown by multiple studies. This is one of the studies. If you see the 30 day death and stroke mortality while using APDs 2.7, it actually doubled. So these papers will not have an ethical approval to be repeated anymore. So, no question about it, you have to look a lot of it. And this is a multiple variant analysis to multiple papers, and you can see all the paper confirming to do protection. So, I don't think this paper will be uh, done anymore. So, we know that it's a fact that you have to use protection. There are three types. You can use distal balloon, distal including balloon, and this has been totally gone from the market. Or you can use a filter, which is still there, and plenty of filter, or you can use a nice technique of proximal protection which is my preferred option, because you can do protection before you cross the region. This is this distal balloon, it was a good idea, but you occlude the flow totally to the brain, and if you have contralateral stenosis, you, you are getting the problem with the brain ischemia. These are the filters, multiple filters, every company has its own idea, its own benefit, and its own loss. So in a few minutes, I will say that the filters available on Angiogar by Cordis, or you have uh, the, the EZ filter by Boston Scientific, this is how it looks like, Spider by ABC, which has been bought by Medtronic, and you have the FiberNet uh, by Medtronic as well, and this is how it looks like, and you have the RS AccuNet, which is used quite a lot by Chester Abbott from the uh, coronary, and you have also the Embo Shield. And uh, this is the shape of the embushing, which is used uh, in Karate quite a lot. So, multiple variety, most of them work quite good. And uh, this is the last one of Interceptor by Medtronic. This is the most recent one. Well, are they all equal? No, they are not all equal. Uh, there is difference. When does emboli happen? It will happen, uh, a, lot, a lot of you are doing, for example, uh, silver hook, like if you're doing a selective devices to lower limb, or if you are using laser like spectronetics, you get multiple emboli. Here you must be careful about your distant uh, embolization protection policy. Uh, but if you are just a normal balloon, you can see the uh, amount of emboli are quite low. <coughs> when embolization occurred, this uh, paper actually affected my practice. I used to do post stent uh, carotid dilatation, but you can see post stent carotid dilatation is a nightmare for distal embolization. So I stopped and just put the stent, and then I go to do a post stent balloon dilatation to carotid to some of the group uh, that has been in the uh, published results. So uh, uh, why filters are important? Yes, because they are life-threatening, uh, especially in the brain, and in the lower limb also it will affect your, your outcome by a lot of complications. Um, <clears throat> How big is the emboli? You can see this is the diameter in micro. The commonest uh, emboli are around 23 micro. And this is study from Germany. So you need a filter that usually at least will include most of them. So they are between 200 and 250 protection. These are the filter with the emboli around it. And you will be surprised because uh, this embolization is unpredictable. So if you have this kind of carotid region, it looks nice. But when you have the filter in, you can this kind of nasty thrombus. This would be just hemispheric to the stroke and the patient will die. Unexpected because the region doesn't look that nasty. And for a bit of nasty region, you can get even smaller emboli. So you cannot predict if the emboli is going to be small or it's going to be large or it's going to be laser. Are the all filters equal? No. Every company has a published paper about the result of this protection 
And you can see the, the epic or the smallest one, uh, which is the biometronic, they have the slowest stroke rate, which is 2.1. Um, as, as I said, they, they can do it in better, but they are not equal. <coughs> Um, filter protection devices, this is the uh, advantage uh, if you are using filter, it maintains perfusion, you can have two micron, it will give you a lot of maneuverability. But the beauty, if you want to do protection before crossing the legion, this is a custom protection idea, which is being developed by Barodi. Barodi is the one which have this idea, uh, same as the bar, both uh, clever ideas. Uh, and uh, this way you do proximal fusion, so you get reverse flow from internal media to uh, external carotid to external carotid, and then you don't get any emboli before crossing the lesion. Uh, and this is uh, one of the uh, very good protection devices. Uh, the, the best one is MoMA device, it was 9 French, now you have MoMA device of 8 French, I wouldn't go into detail of how to use MoMA. But you have this two balloon, one the common cross, one external carotid, and you have multiple three filters to get uh, the emboli. It's perfect, it's now my standard. If you want to use lower length selective devices, the one I like is a spa leader because it can be long and you can put it before the TPL by rotation because sometimes you don't have much distance. So I've got 25 seconds left. So this is the uh, follow up. You can see if you use filter, yes, definitely it is better. This is a complication. Sometimes you get the uh, filter stuck into the internal carotid and you can't pull it up. Very nasty situation. So definitely they are not without complications. They have complications. But the proximal, uh, proximal protection devices, I said, is, is an, an option which is really appealing because you have protection before crossing the region. And to answer the question, what is the APD in my mind? Well, each region has its own scheme for what is superior, what so. It's not the same if you're doing T-bar, not the same for lower limb, not the same for profit. This is number one. Number two, each EPD have its own advantage and disadvantage. None of them have ideal. And proximal protection devices is, to me, is my preferred protection device for carotid, because you have protection before you cross the region. Filter error is good, but they are between 200 and 250 microns, and the field is always developing, always changing. Every month you have something new. I was having very high hopes for fiber net, and when I used fiber net, it didn't work. And APDs are definitely here to stay. And uh, sorry for the previous uh, disruption of the slides, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Roma, and uh, we keep the questions for the end of the session. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, uh, Dr. Rettenberg is still here because I guess he left. So uh, I have the honor to introduce my co chairman, Dr. Tarek Amal. Dr. Tarek is a French vascular surgeon 